afternoon today. Um, it's a great day um, as we're speaking to one of our partners in Sarasota. This is episode number five of the Hope Residence Chat with Top Agents. As we have Joel Schemmel in Sarasota, Florida. Joel, how are you doing today? Ah, it's a be another beautiful day in Florida, in Sarasota. So it's a it's a good day. Is there ever a bad day uh, in Sarasota, Florida? <laughs> one, there's one or two per year. Okay, well that's good to hear. So Joel, um, I wanted to first of all congratulate you on building such a successful business. Um, and one of the great things about Pote Residence is, and with our chat with realtors, is we like to understand why did you get in the business? How did you get into the business? So let's take a few years back. Um, where did you grow up? Uh, so I'm actually from the Midwest. So I'm probably one of the few people you know that was born in South Dakota. Uh, but I spent most of my younger years in South Dakota and Iowa, uh, where I grew up. And uh, from there, went to the University of Iowa and actually got an accounting degree. Okay. And, uh, and then went to, started working in Chicago for Arthur Anderson, one of the big eight accounting firms originally. That was one of the biggest back yeah, then. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. It, um, so did that actually, and also got my law degree at night while I was in working in Chicago for Arthur Anderson, and and so that kind of parlayed into a eight year stint in Europe. So I went, I was seconded uh, to Sofia, Bulgaria, and subsequently to Prague in the Czech Republic uh, in 1995. That must have been a learning experience from yeah. um, someone in the from the Midwest, but at least you're used to the cold weather. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's right. So great experience. Of course, I would encourage anybody to spend some time abroad if they ever have the opportunity. Great learning experience. And, uh, and of course, got to travel extensively and see, you know, most of Europe while we were there. So it was a great, great experience. So, okay, so you're in Europe. And then what? So what happened is we were in Europe, we had all our, we have three kids, we had all our children there. And during the last few years we were there, we decided, you know what, we really need to have a, a home in, in the US that we can kind of go back to. And so honestly, we kind of threw a dart. We had some friends um, who were familiar with Sarasota. And at that time, Arthur Anderson actually had a large office here uh, where they did created all their tax software. So we decided to buy a house here. So we bought that in 2000. Oh, wow. And what was Sarasota back? What was Sarasota like in 2000? I mean, it's interesting. It's, um, you know, Sarasota has always been the little town that kind of lives like a bigger city. Um, so it's, um, it's certainly grown massively in the 20 years we've been, been here. Uh, but it, you know, it's a, I, I think the difference between then and today is people know where Sarasota is today. And they probably didn't know where it was 20 years ago. Oh, wow. <laughs> So you moved to um, you moved to Sarasota 2000 and you were working with Arthur Anderson still correct? Uh, so that Arthur Anderson went away during while I was in Europe. So I then parlayed into working for Ernst and Young and and actually at that point in time I had opened a law firm in Prague, and so it was practicing separately from the big eight firms. And so um, so myself and a Czech attorney started it. And so when when we left. So we were part-time residents initially. 2003 was when we came full-time back to Sarasota. And at that time, we left. I left the practice as managing partner of a 40, 40 attorney law firm in the Czech Republic. So kind of came to Florida, had opportunities in, in New York as an attorney, but decided that wasn't the right thing for us with our three kids. And so we just decided, you know what, let's just move to Sarasota and figure it out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So 2003, we were here. I did sit for the Florida bar. So I am licensed in Florida now as well. Um, but, you know, Sarasota is not a, a big business city. So it was kind of a matter of what, what was interesting from a business perspective. And that's kind of when we got into the, into the real estate world, essentially. So what, 17, 18 years ago, uh, we jumped in. I mean, that must have been hard going from being a partner at a law practice um, and, you know, working for, you know, a top brand um, to going in into, you know, starting over and getting into real estate. 
tell us, you know, like tell us the mindset that plus you had a family with three kids, you know, so I mean, it, it's not like, you know, it's not like you're from Sarasota and you have cousins and all these relationships. So I think, which is exciting to me to understand your story of how you went from there to where you're at today. Tell us what you did go back to that first year and what made you successful um, and, you know, what made you stay in the business and not quit. I mean, I think it's a great question. And I think it's, um, um, you know, I always say, like, like you said, I kind of had to make the leap of, leap of faith into the business and kind of go after it. I think just like many people kind of coming into the real estate world, they think it's a cushy job and really easy to break through and, and be successful. But I would say, you know, it was harder than any of my other careers uh, before. You know, being an attorney or being a tax consultant, it was certainly harder. Um, and I think, you know, one thing I learned in that 2003, because obviously it was a good market then, but we had no connections to anybody here in Sarasota. So um, it was certainly a reality check for us as to how to grow the business. Um, obviously, I thought with my background as an attorney and accountant, people would be flocking um, you know, giving me their listing, it didn't work that way. You know, you really have to start from zero and, and build up your business. So, uh, you know, I think you, you, you start humble, you know, and kind of learn that you have to roll up your sleeves and kind of get dirty. And I think, you know, I did that not knowing a single person, um, you know, I kind of, um, made, you know, a good, had a good relationship with a couple experienced agents. And they let me, you know, take their listings and kind of uh, have open houses at those listings and even, you know, kind of advertise them, so to speak, a little bit um, from my perspective. So, um, you know, that that's really how I started was I decided geographically where I wanted to focus, which was the neighborhood I lived in. And I literally, you know, did mailers and sat for an open house every Sunday there for probably, you know, 20 to 30 weeks in a row. Um, and, and the second that broker that brought that up, um, how they built their business by basically going to all the open houses, because a lot of the top agents don't want to do the open houses and then just sitting there, they built relationships, they met people and one of them actually got their first client by doing it, which was Britney Spears. Uh, um, as crazy as that is, but he said, you know, I showed up, her, her manager looked at the house and they're like, oh, you know, you seem like a great guy. What else is available? Uh -huh. So is that how you kind of started your business too? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, you know, you, you, I think the reality is of course you, at that time you, you, you know, did an open house thinking you would pick up a buyer, but my additional strategy was just to meet all the neighbors in that neighborhood and really establish myself as a, as a source of information in that neighborhood, somebody you go to. So um, you definitely was twofold strategy wise, but of course it is fun to think about some of those. I mean, I have uh, probably, I can trace my first sale um, back in those days, probably 2004 to a series of probably 10 transactions with one family. Um, well, let's know. talk about that. How did you get your first sale um, and how long did it take? And you talked about how you were doing flyers and all that. So obviously mm -hmm. what's important too, because you, you know, this was the first time you went from having a job to being an entrepreneur where you're getting no paycheck. It's not like the company's mailing out the flyers. So mm -hmm. A, you're not bringing in revenue and B, you're having to invest money into getting your marketing out of your own pocket. So A, what was it like on that? B, how long did you know you bleed money? And then C, how long did it take you to actually get your first sale and which you know got you a check? I mean, I think those are incredible questions because I think people again kind of perceive the business as immediately lucrative and, and it really isn't. I would say at that time again it was a good market then as well. And um, I, I would say, honestly, to really create any business you know, before I could pay the bills, so to speak, it was 12 to 18 months later um, before 12 I to 18 a, months before I kind of was paying, paying. And did you ever want money? money? <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, I think I think that's the biggest challenge, right? You kind of start your initiatives and unless you stick with them for a good amount of time, I mean, doing direct mail, which we did a lot of back then, you know, you do it for three months, it was a waste of money. You have to do it for a year to produce your, probably your first tangible uh, transaction out of it. So it again, it is going into this business with your eyes open that it is a year or two of investment from my perspective to get things rolling. Um, it can be very lucrative, don't get me wrong. You know, we closed, you know, going from zero in 2003, we closed over a hundred million last year. Um, we have over a hundred million uh, closed or pended this year already. Um, so again, it, it, it can parlay very quickly, but, but it is a humble beginning, I think. And that's, that's part of it is. What I liked about it is what you said, how, um, you know, a lot of people start doing the flyers and they think like the first week they're going to get a bite and get a return of investment back. Um, so you, you were committed to the 12 to 18 months, which you did. Um, and then you started building a business. And then how did you evolve your business to where it is right now? I mean, because you said you're doing 100 million a year in sales, which is huge numbers. Mm -hmm. um, what was and then also because Sarasota, obviously, you have some trophy properties. How long did it take you to get that first trophy property? And I, and I think that's right. And I think, you know, the way I approached it was uh, to really focus on my neighborhood to build a track record in that neighborhood. So, you know, I became the expert in the neighborhood where I lived and, and then kind of you know, built from there, so to speak. Um, and it is, um, you know, it's persistence. It is sometimes, you know, good luck, but I think, you know, what was able to happen from that is uh, building from that base business. Um, again, I, I talked about one of my first transactions, somebody came to my open house in that neighborhood they ended up buying that house I had open. I listed their waterfront house um, outside the neighborhood. Then I had another buyer came to that open house and that family um, that bought that open house, I've probably done 10 transactions with in the, in the 15 years. Uh, so again, wow. you're kind of building that base. Um, and it, that's the beauty of it. Once you get it going, it builds on itself to a certain extent. Um, but I didn't get into the million plus properties right away. I mean, it took a couple of years um, and you, you know, I would say at this point, we're very well recognized, particularly in this super luxury market. So, you know, we probably touch every transaction over $10 million in Sarasota or, um, you know, we just closed the highest sale ever in Sarasota. And what um, was that? Tell us about that. Um, yeah, so, you know, kind of one of those just interesting things. Obviously, it's the market, but sometimes you just get really great properties, too, that are just off the charts. So um, the previous record was in the low, low 16 millions. Uh, we listed a property literally about 75 days ago for 19. Oh, wow. 19, nine, and we closed it 45 days later. Um, it was recorded in the mid sixes, but, um, you know, there was a lot of, um, they bought the furniture and all the furnishings and everything separately. So that's a kind of a little bit on the low side of the number. Um, okay. but, but again, it would and, obviously and, beat the 16 million though, with the furniture and everything. It must yeah, have been, yeah. well, I mean, what kind of furniture did we have? I mean, everything they bought at turnkey oh, wow. down, down to the plates and dishes. And, and I will say it's, you know, not every day you get a perfectly curated property like that. Every little detail had been perfected. So, um, you know, again, I'd love to say our marketing was phenomenal, which it is, but, you know, sometimes the great properties sell themselves um, as well. So, and, and again, it's, it's really interesting and dynamic market for us because that buyer was from California. We, we had not seen California buyers in Sarasota until the last 12 months. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, because I assume Sarasota had a lot of people from the south that made a lot of money um, and also northeast. So this, where are the buyers? Are you noticing a lot are leaving New York and California because of leaving for taxes? Where, where are you noticing these buyers coming from? Yeah, and that's kind of, you know, I hinted about it kind of it was Sarasota was as a little sleepy, you know, 15, 20 years ago, where now Sarasota, I think, is on the same radar screen. 
um, with people who are moving to Florida. So those people who may have just looked at Naples and Fort Lauderdale or Miami, et cetera, now are looking at Sarasota too. Um, and so the, you know, the Gulf Coast and particularly Sarasota had been very traditionally Midwest. So it was um, Ohio and Indiana and Iowa and Illinois um, were, the, were the drivers of the market here. Um, that kind of all changed, I think, with the current tax regime started it really where we have seen an incredible influx from New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, which had traditionally gone to the east coast of Florida. And now all of a sudden kind of Naples and Sarasota um, are on the radar screen. And I think particularly if people are comparing those things and what you get for the money, um, you know, Sarasota is still uh, undervalued comparatively to the prices they're getting in Naples and on the East Coast. So it's also became kind of a value equation, uh, interesting, and, and also that it's, it's, a, it's got a different vibe. So it's a little more of a, a year round place. It's not as seasonal here. So, and we have, you know, incredible, you know, we raised our kids here, incredible schools, you know, one of the top 10 high schools in the entire country um, is in the area. So again, people are moving here just to go to that public high school. Um, so again, a lot of little elements that are bringing people in, but New York, New Jersey, Connecticut um, increased, you know, multiple times in the last few years. And then I think kind of the COVID wave has created another element from particularly from California and even Texas. We're seeing a lot of Texas uh, migrations here as well. Interesting, so, Texas, because mm -hmm. Texas is similar to Florida, low taxes. Tax wise, yeah, exactly. So it's- So they're selling probably think, their properties and coming to Florida because they're getting so much money. Yeah, I think that's part of it. And some some cities in Texas have gotten, you know, really big. And so people looking for a little less, you know, um, big city feel. Yeah. Well, let's go back a year ago, um, almost a year ago when COVID started and everything got shut down. Um, you know, you couldn't do open houses, you couldn't do anything. And you obviously have a team mm -hmm. where like, and you've been in business. I mean, did you think we the business was going to be over? I mean, it was very scary for people, but um, leaders lead and, and win. So tell us like what, what you're, what you, as a leader, what happened and, and where we're at right now. Yeah, I mean, I think it was really an interesting time in the business. So we had, we had started off the year with a really strong, you know, first couple months. Um, so, you know, January and February are two of our best months ever uh, going into 2020. And then of course, you know, obviously just a complete shutdown mid-March and and so it's one of those interesting things right you you kind of decide what what strategy you're, you're going to approach of course we had no idea at the time what the consequences to the market would ultimately be um but i think you know like you said it's you know you have this downtime i had a team of five basically at the time so it's a matter of you know what can we do in this downtime to improve ourselves and so we we literally kind of continued on that pace, a very structured regime every day of, you know, working through our databases, you know, upgrading our um, CRMs uh, and, and doing many of those initiatives to build our business. But also at the time, you know, we were very fortunate. We, we had traditionally carried 30 to 40 listings at a time and so obviously a lot of hand-holding with those clients and so what's, what's happening in the market. Because the clients must have been having a heart attack. Like they're, you know, people want to sell and you can't even show the homes. Um, so they're like, what do we do? Do we take it off? And, yeah. and so forth. Yeah, I mean, it was really interesting, right? At the time we, we all didn't know it was more of a, you know, um, communication and we're all in this together and we'll figure it out as things evolve. And so, you know, that was part of the process. Um, I had, again, you know, been able to use that time to do some things that I'd historically been too busy to do. And, and I think they were received really well by our clients. I did a lot of video content. And um, so putting those messages out every week, um, some aspect of the market or some perspective about what was you know, going to happen and going to involve, or going to evolve. Um, obviously, social media, uh, everything became much more social media driven. 
So we were kind of picked up on a lot of those initiatives, but it was, again, we didn't know what was coming. Um, you know, we are knock on wood, you know, to a certain extent, the beneficiaries of, of it. So no complaints in retrospect. Um, but, but again, it was a very scary time, I think, for everybody in the real estate world that was, you know, shut down literally for two months without, you know, a single showing or the ability to really do anything. Now, 12 months later, have you ever seen business this busy in Sarasota since you've been there? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's literally, um, something we've never seen. I mean, like I referenced, we had traditionally carried 30 to 40 listings, we're really fortunate right now that we have nine. Wow, uh, which is a lot. Which is a lot compared for this market. And um, so, you know, so we're, we're still happy, but, you know, it, it's been an incredible year. Uh, the the chat, uh, you know, stats are off the chart. Like I said, we've, you know, through this time, you know, May, mid-May, we are ahead of our, uh, our last year, you know, total closed stats. So, um, you know, five months and we're ahead of last year already. Of course, the natural issue is we still have demand here and we still have people waiting. And so, but the market is naturally slow, has been, slow, you know, stymied to a certain extent and, and has slowed down just because of the lack of inventory. So, of course, the world is a different animal today as to how you approach the business. It's a, it's a little bit knowing about not so much as having a huge number of listings, but knowing the sellers that are willing to sell um, and, and connect, connecting the dots with buyers. So I, I don't think we're going to see a in, huge influx of listings anytime soon, because literally in the Sarasota market, if things, anything in the normal world, and I say the normal world, anything under a million, that's priced even in the benchmark of reasonableness is within their under contract within you know 24 to 48 to you know 48 hours basically. So inventory is not even making it to market. It's usually um, happening you know before it ever gets there. Do you believe that um, we're at a bubble, or do you just believe it's different and that businesses um, businesses is, is moving forward? Yeah, so, you know, a lot different than the previous bubble, I think. I, I think the fund, what's different is the fundamentals here. It's all fundamental population growth. So are these people that are either had accelerated their decision to have a second home in Florida or literally um, have decided to move to Florida on a permanent basis. And so it's not, there's really no speculation going on in the market. Um, it's all end user buyers. And um, you know, generally, although obviously rates are helping, interest rates, low interest rates are helping. You know, nobody's buying with a mortgage contingency here. They're all paying cash. Uh, they may do financing in the background, but uh, but the reality is, it's not a. It, it's a very cash-driven uh, market, and and I don't think that's changing. I think we're you know we have the baby boomer baby boomers that are retiring, we now have mobility for work workforce. And so we're seeing a lot of 40 and 50 year olds that can work anywhere in the country now because of you know, the way COVID has you know, trans, transformed things. So they're moving here you know, with their kids where Florida used to be more retirement driven. Now they're coming here you know, in their forties and fifties and, and uh, you know, you know, finishing their kids high school and, and college here. And are loving it because, right? You can be outside 350 days a year. Um, so, you know, again, it's just a great life, you know, great lifestyle, and people are appreciating that. And, and of course, Florida, is, as as we know, has been more open uh, than most most states as well. So, people have you know gravitated to that as a positive. Yeah. What advice do you have um, if someone's watching this that's, you know, in a career they're not happy and they want to get into real estate? What advice would you give them? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the number one thing is, you know, just don't think it's, um, it's you, you have to approach it like a business. So, you, you know, it's not going to be instantly gratifying like it may be perceived from the outside, but it does take some time to build up. So, you know, be ready to invest, you know, money if you can, but your time, you, you have to 
you know, go to work every day. You have to have a, a schedule. You have to have a, a to-do list that you're going to complete every day because there's nobody that's going to be standing over you telling you what to do. So you have to be self-motivated and ready kind of to roll up your sleeves and, and dig in. And, and that's the beauty of the business. I think anybody can be successful in this business, but you do have to, you know, dig in, be very persistent. Um, you know, we've always taken the approach that we add value, you know, to our clients. So somehow determine your strategy or your niche to add value uh, to clients or areas or whatever you can do. Uh, Cause that will be what people gravitate towards is, you know, how does this person add value to me? And, and again, uh, we always approach it very much as a, it's my background as a, you know, business person, accounting, uh, legal, you know, my niche has always been, I approach this very much from a business perspective. You have one of the most important assets in your, in your life, um, you know, and you want somebody professional managing that sale or, or purchase process for you. Um, and that's, you know, that's where we add value. And so um, to finish it off, what, um, what's the goals for you and your team for the future? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's, I think, and I think it's a world, right, we're ever changing. I think our perspective is always to continue to improve. And, and I think, um, of course, we want to continue to increase our sales from year to year, but I think it's more important to deliver kind of a, a, a you know, increase our ability to, to deliver a white glove service that, you know, people appreciate, and that's being able to manage that making that process as simple and easy as possible from start to finish. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's, I think, where we're always trying to improve. Can we improve our processes? Can we improve our marketing? Uh, can we improve our, you know, overall client relationships and, and those types of things? So it's, you know, there's, you know, I've learned over the years, there's always room for improvement. And so that's, that's our number one goal is to make uh, our clients, you know, um, make them feel like this, this, the, the process has been simple and the best they've ever experienced. Well, Joel, I, I got to tell you, it's been an honor to feature you to learn more about your story. But I, what I think is so remarkable is here's someone from the Midwest um, in a completely different career in real estate and took a map out, as you said, threw a dart, came to Sarasota, Florida. Um, and as you said, 20 years later is the top broker in the market doing over hundred million dollars in sales. So it's an honor to learn more about your story. Um, and all I could say is congratulations, but as an entrepreneur, it's, it's motivating to, to learn to not quit and to always believe in yourself. Thank you very much. No, I appreciate that very much. And, and I think, um, you know, my only other thing is, is it's, and of course, it's not all about me. I have an amazing team. And so that's, you know, that's, that's actually instrumental to our success and our continued success as well. Teamwork makes the dreams work. So thank you so much for your time. Joel. Enjoy the yeah, rest. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. You too. Take care.